to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with the Australia in Space magazine. We're in Singapore for the Singapore Space and Technology Limited Global Space and Technology Convention. I'm with Dr. Victor Ku, who is the Director of Survey and Genetics with the Singapore Land Authority. Dr. Ku, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Having me. Wonderful. Now, you gave a presentation today here at the convention on uh, Earth mapping and using uh, space uh, generated data. Uh, we're going to talk about GNSS and EOS, Earth Observation uh, Satellite Data. Um, maybe introduce us to the SLA, uh, the Land Authority, and some of the innovations that you're using space related data with. Okay. So, uh, Singapore Land Authority uh, is an authority that uh, handles uh, the land aspect of the, of the work. So, we manage uh, state land. We also do regulatory work, uh, like, for example, uh, transaction of properties uh, and also re uh, in the survey of o ownership boundaries. Got it, yep. So the last pillar that we are uh, focusing on is in geospatial uh, applications. So we want to enable uh, geospatial information uh, for uh, the public, uh, the government as well as the citizens uh, in, in Singapore. Yeah. Do you find l the land in Singapore, because it's uh, you know, a relatively small space, but the, the border is changing on an ongoing basis, so uh, you're monitoring the border, yeah. the way land is u being used. Do you find year to year that is changing, or is it more a gradual change and you are starting to able to track that quite accurately? Right. So uh, the term border is very sensitive, so it's not border, it's our coastline. Got it, yes. Right. Well, you're an island, of course. Yes. yes. So, so the, the coastline is changing, uh, not not rapidly, but it's, it's, it's changing uh, yep. for a certain reason. And I think the whole idea here is that for us, the most important thing is how do we protect our coastline? I think yep. I mentioned about uh, the, the two drivers that uh, drive us in our innovation in uh, geospatial work, uh, digitalization and climate crisis. Yep. Uh, we are looking at a uh, very serious uh, sea level rise uh, you know, in, in the near future. Yep. Uh, and coastal protection is one of the most important uh, area of work uh, for the government and we need to really plan ahead and we look at the coastal area uh, very closely in details. Yep. Know, so the mapping, the data capturing of the coastal a area uh, through EOS as well as through ground-based uh, sensors, yep. uh, ground-based technology uh, is, is very important work for us. Uh, we are not mapping this line in 2D but we are mapping this line in 3D because right. we need to know exactly where is the level of the line and whether the water level will you know will come up beyond that line. Now we're talking about SIRENT, uh, maybe you can introduce us to SIRENT but are you starting to map it down into centimeters, uh, you know very very small incremental changes over time? Yeah. So for this kind of mapping we definitely in Singapore's context we definitely have to look at centimeter level accuracy, you know, horizontally yep. and vertically. Right. So we actually use um, combination of data, so GNSS data and EOS data. EOS data give us the map, the, the context. GNSS data give us the position. GNSS data help us to monitor uh, movements. Yep. Right? So for example, our siren infrastructure uh, is being used or is being uh, in, in the development of being used used to monitor sea level rise. So everybody knows that GNSS is good uh, on land and can monitor the movement of the land vertically. We use that for that purpose, but at the same time, we also use the same infrastructure to monitor the sea level movement. And this is key because when sea level rise and you do not know whether your land is going down or not, yeah. And when you're depending on one single infrastructure, you're able to see that. But both might be occurring at the same time yes. as well, right? Yes. So, yeah. Um, but you're using it for other things around the city, uh, you know, tree, uh, sort of tree growth, tree pruning. Right. Uh, so even down to the municipalities being able to use it. Right. What's some of the case studies that you are using some of this data with? So this uh, siren infrastructure, we had put it in place in 20. Six is right. a, is a long so way for us. So sixteen years old yeah. now, yeah. Sixteen years old. We know that there's a lot of potential for this work. You know, the whole idea here is that if you can get your accurate position anywhere in Singapore at any point of time, there's a lot of things that you can do. Yeah. Right. So mapping is one uh, very key application. So 
most of the mapping work in Singapore now all depend on siren uh, to give you the position. And of course, on top of that, we are looking at the more smart nation application into uh, autonomous vehicle uh, development and robotics, into robotics. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is part of the digitalization. So and Siren's this actually drives us you know, in our work. Well, this is it. Siren's a network. Uh, is it a public accessible network or they subscribe mm. to it? Or is it a sort of data, data pool set? Uh, just describe how the network actually works. Right. So Siren is a network uh, of infrastructure. So, so there are ten, about 10 reference stations Got it. Uh, that is networked together. Uh, and from the very start, we know that we need to have a good uh, workable business model. So a user in Singapore, uh, they have to subscribe to the system because we have to re cost recover in the yep. operation of the system. So there is a business model, subscribe to us. Uh, in a day's time, you can get access Got it. to the data. Right. And from a robotics perspective, and there was a lot of uh, examples in terms of robotics, driverless vehicles, but also you know, robotic delivery. Where do you see that that, do you think that's going to be the key enabler? Is that that's going to be the point of difference for robotic systems and land-based robotics? Yep. So Siren as a positioning infrastructure definitely yep. will be an uh, enabler for uh, AMR, uh, Autonomous Mobile Robotics, yep. that, that's one. But besides that, besides that, you have your position accurate, you need your map to be accurate as well, or yep. high resolution as well. So I think SLA, we are looking at combining both. So we have an accurate centimeter level position. Yep. You need to have centimeter level maps yep. to work with your position. Are you, you're almost creating a digital twin of the city. Would that be about right? Yes, that's another area that I'm involved in. Yep. Uh, uh, capturing data uh, from airborne and on the ground, uh, yep. doing a lot of laser scanning work, and then producing uh, 3D maps uh, yep. and 3D digital twins. Uh, and, and that is key, and, you know, and of course, we have to look at the resolution. So these are all very high resolution 3D uh, data set yep. that will support. Uh, what resolution are you at at the moment? Uh, we are looking at submeter uh, resolutions yeah. for building, and then the, the different types of uh, features have different uh, resolutions. Yep. Yeah. So for road, it will be high resolution because it needs to be supporting the uh, autonomous vehicle Got application. It. Uh, now, in terms of the space-related data, what are some of the space services that you would access from, uh, based on, say, a conference like this? Uh, you've got various satellites. Are they uh, state-owned satellites or commercial satellites that you grab, grab that data yeah. from? Our, our current work um, generally still based on EOS and GNSS. Yep. I think through the conference, we keep ourselves abreast of what are the new um, development. You know, yep. We just learned that there's a space-based LiDAR system. Right, which yeah. Which is not, not known for many people, but, but this is a space-based LiDAR. We have been using airborne LiDAR yep. system. So space LiDAR system so is new. So now you've got a space one. Yeah, we've got right. a space one, and uh, we, we have to learn a bit more and look at it, how, how we can adopt this new technology. Wonderful. What's yeah. your general roadmap for 2023 as the SLA? Do you, do you work to a, an annual budget, I imagine? But what would be a highlight for this year that you would anticipate? Yeah. Um, doing the work o operationally uh, is, is one part of our work. I, I think there is uh, another area that we want to focus on, which is capacity building. Uh, we wanted to focus a lot more on that. Uh, Singapore, uh, it's very hard to, for us to get uh, the, the technical people who work in this yep. area. In fact, we don't have an education in geomatics and, right. and geospatial. Our, our, our graduates are coming from Australia. Yeah, uh, great. From Malaysia and from, from UK, right? So we would very much want to go into the school, the secondary school, uh, create awareness, uh, ask them to go and study. What, what is the area. line of study for dramatics? Is just geography and mathematics put together? Uh, or is there a lot of imagery here as well, right? There, there are actually three main areas, uh, geography, mathematics, yep. and geodesy. I don't, I don't know whether you've heard about this term, no. geodesy. Ge geodesy is a very fundamental uh, knowledge, uh, you, you learn about how to measure Earth. Got basically. it. Yeah, okay. Um, and w that's a gap. So I take it uh, you've got Australian. Where in particular do you find that the students are coming from in Australia? Any particular university or courses? Uh, what would be a sort of a call to action for students that want to be interested in this, uh, this field? 
Australia has a very strong um, tradition, you know, for surveying, yeah. and for mapping and geometric engineering. Even though over time, some of these courses have evolved. Yeah. Uh, into Is that coming from our mining industry and resources potentially? Um, so. So most of the surveyors that graduated from Australia, yes. the biggest pool for them is in the mining industry because yes. that's where the money yeah. is. But we also hope that you know some of them would come, you go into other sector, like mapping for yeah. the government and you know and also GIS work uh, for data analytics and things like that. Yeah. It's definitely a different sort of application, isn't it, from a city perspective. Uh, and uh, sort of the way our population moves and, and now with robotics. I think, is that potentially the, the key change here now with advanced computing and robotics has created the requirement for dramatics within the city environment or do you think it's always kind of built there? Because I've always felt that cities never really have applied this data in the, in the way that it could be. It's either yeah. cost prohibitive. Uh, in Australia, it's often a local council that's managing it, so they might not have the budget. Uh, and uh, but yeah, what what do you think is the driver over sort of the last sort of five years that has right. allowed this this domain to explode into you know it, the applications that it has? Right. So so basically, it still drive down to digitization and uh, climate crisis that, Got that we are looking at that yep. drives us. So in city like Singapore, uh, digitization is very intense. Everything we want it to be automated. Yeah. We want it to be uh, easy to use. Uh, and and in our urban environment, um, you know, so so you need data to do that. You need position to do that. And that when you put the two uh, basic ingredient together, your map and your coordinate, yep. you can do all all kind of things digitally. Wonderful. Well, uh, it's again, it's a fascinating domain. Uh, for those that missed you at here at the GSTC. Uh, we'll try to have some more uh, information about your about the uh, Singapore Land Authority. So thank you so much, Dr. Victor Ku, the Director of Survey and Dramatics with the Singapore Land Authority. Thank you very much for joining thank us you. on Australia in Space TV. Thank you.